Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Wednesday, or Tuesday night, excuse me, June 20th, 2023. It is about 10, 11 p.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California. 3.1 earthquake up here into the Alaska region. The latest quake on the globe. Looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity, we do see some deep scale movement here over around Japan. This is coming off of uh, a really deep 5.0. Talking about 411 kilometers deep here, well south of Tokyo, southwest here along the plate boundary. Uh, so we'll watch for some further movement um, considerably, well, probably around this area up here is what I'm guessing. We have seen a little bit of swarming here over the past seven days in this area. Uh, but this is a pretty deep earthquake, so that could trigger some further uh, surface quakes here along the uh, Japan Trench. Continue to watch that. Uh, over here around the Tonga area, looks like the last earthquake was a 5.7 here in Fiji, 547 kilometers deep. Uh, a little bit of deeper movement earlier this morning as well. Uh, 607 kilometers deep there with that 4.4. Uh, slight adjustment up here around the Tonga Trench. Very shallow earthquake activity. This has been the region that we've been watching here for a little while. They've been swarming with um, quite a few fives and sixes following that deep 7.2 few days ago there into the Tonga Trench. So continue to watch out for some movement. Uh, New Zealand doesn't look like anything shown up on the USGS model. And um, not a whole lot shown up on the Earthquake 3D globe either. So just let's go ahead and double check it here from the GeoNet servers. Uh, see what they have listed. 15 hours ago, the last listed earthquake, a 3.7. So we'll check out the drums here. Not going to go over every little small microquake out here, but um, there's that 3.7 showing up there, it looks like. Yep. Uh, but aside from that, uh, goodness, awfully quiet there across New Zealand currently. A little bit of movement stretching up here through Papua New Guinea area, westward into the Indonesia Islands region. Mostly twos and some threes out there. A newer quake up here into the Andaman Sea with that 4.7 just off the coast there. Uh, Myanmar, that one coming in just earlier this evening. Some deeper movement quakes here into the, uh, this is Afghanistan, I believe. Yep, 4.5, 195 kilometers deep for that earthquake. Pretty recent earthquake here this evening with that uh, magnitude. Quite a few twos and threes out there as well across the Mediterranean region. Nothing spectacular going on there. Uh, we do have some new development though, breaking out here into the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Very active after, um, oh, I'd say a couple weeks here of quiet activity. We're getting things stirred back up here into the uh, divergent boundaries of the Atlantic. Let's go ahead and go over here to the USGS map. Starting down here, uh, two earthquakes, a 4.7 and a 5.5 within minutes of each other today, uh, this evening, I should say, out here into the, uh, eh, I'm not for sure which fracture zone this is. Take your pick. There's quite a few of them, uh, but that's the oceanic crust out there, divergent boundaries. Also some movement up north here along that Atlantic, uh, or along this plate boundary as well. Central Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a 4.8, and up here the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a uh, 4.5 from uh, earlier today as well. So, Things are getting uh, somewhat active here. That's just kind of the cycle. That's how it goes. We get the surface earthquake activity. Deeper regions getting hit. Uh, once it comes, you know, pretty much to a closing time, so to speak, we start seeing these uh, earthquakes pop up here in the uh, divergent zones, and it all kind of starts over again. Uh, let's see what we got around Puerto Rico. Some fours and threes, it looks like, here tonight. Uh, nothing major. South America region, a couple fours down there as well. Uh, look at the Earthquake 3D globe. Shows uh, some smaller quakes down there into the South America region as well. Nothing big going on in that area. Uh, a little scattered movement here across the Middle America Trench with some fours kicking off there off the coast of the, uh, looks like maybe Nicaragua area down in this region here, maybe a little bit further up north around the El Salvador area. All right, looking at the states as we zoom in here, a little bit of movement across the uh, eastern portion of the country. Nothing big coming in yet, uh, but a couple twos over the last 24 hours. Movement out here in Texas as well, outside 
it just says southern texas here 2.7 earlier this afternoon it looks like south of dixon here um there's quite a few oil fields out here a, a lot let me see what we got i remember flying over this area every time i go out there it's just, it's a lot of activity out there a lot of um uh, of these oil fields and literally within feet of one we got that 2.7 today so as you can see thousands upon thousands of them uh, are out here across texas they're everywhere all right uh, further north not a whole lot going on looks like a little bit of movement here across yellowstone with some smaller earthquake activity uh, this morning so let's go ahead and check out the yellowstone overview and see what we have here um, I'm guessing it's going to be coming from this little clutter earlier. It doesn't look like there's too much activity kicking off here um, recently, though. Maybe a, hand, maybe a little earthquake activity, nothing big. But there was a little small event of um, a handful of quakes there earlier this morning. All right, Pacific Northwest, movement across the Cascades. One earthquake here outside of Portland. Been a little while since we've seen any movement out there, but it uh, looks like near Lakeshore, Washington. 1.6, nothing big, just a little small microquake activity out there in the Northern California area. Talking about the southern end of the Cascadia, 1.6, 7 o'clock this morning it looks like. Uh, let's check out the trimmer map, see what we got here for the um, trimmer along the Cascadia. Zip, zero, nada. Not a peep or a squeak there along the Cascadia, according to the uh, PNSN.org network here. So, coming to an end as far as trimmer activity goes for now. Uh, a little spotty activity here across the Calaveras Fault Zone, stretching into the plate boundary. That's a San Andreas Fault. Nothing big going on. Uh, if I had to say one area that maybe popped up of increasing activity, that's, uh, well, around the Long Valley Super Volcano. Got about... Um, uh, if we include this one down here near Bishop, away from the area, about 11 earthquakes. Nothing big, uh, but it did kick off here with a 2.6. Very shallow earthquake. Uh, it is just outside the Long Valley Caldera. That's a super volcano down there around Mammoth Lakes. Uh, so not for sure exactly what's going on down there, but occasionally we do get some earthquakes. Let's pull up the um, volcano hazard map for that area and see if we can find the seismograph stations there around the Long Valley. Um, your goodness, looks like they got plenty of them. So we're going to go to, um, it looks more around this area, around Mammoth Mountain. Let's see what we got for seismograph. That one shows nothing at all, so I'm guessing that one's not very uh, operable. There's some of the activity. There's that 2. Uh, what was that, 2.6? Showing up there across the Mammoth Lakes area near Long Valley Super Volcano. A couple other smaller earthquakes listed in there as well. And uh, USGS did report the majority of them. Uh, but for now, it looks like just a little earthquake activity. It has since calmed down there across that region. But that's you know, a slight uptick. We haven't really seen too much activity there recently. And Southern California, just um, another typical day down there, I think. Not seeing any major movement going on, mostly smaller microquakes, nothing of concern currently there across the southern portion of the state. Alaska area, got one earthquake here into the strait here, 3.1 in the last hour. See what else is there, the big island of Hawaii, most of the activity here around Pahala, nothing major going on. I believe Kilauea Volcano is still continuing. Uh, let's go check it out there from the hazard notification system from the USGS. And that's going to be HVO, Kilauea Daily Update here. Looks like they did put out one tonight as well. Um, that's due to, looks like a pause. The summit eruption at Kilauea Volcano is currently paused following a rapid decline in vent and lava lake activity around 4 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Um, all recent eruptive activity has been confined to the crater within the summit. So currently, pause. Uh, rapid decline in lava fountaining and effusion at the eruptive vent on the southwest side of the crater. Vent activity had been vigorous up to that point in the day. Circulation of southwestern lava lake slowed thereafter and the lake surface dropped by several meters. So it looks like... 
uh, along with the eruptive tremor, uh, everything's declining currently. Looks like summit tilt meters detected a quick transition to inflationary tilt around the same time that tremor began dropping. So that means they're potentially could be looking at a little a little blockage below uh, the surface. Let me see what we got here for the um, volcano hazards. I want to check out these seismograph stations, see if we got anything unusual going on there across the area. So if you're getting inflationary tilt, but all um, activity at the surface, as far as magma reaching the surface and, and creating lava, obviously, has come to a pause, that means that there's a blockage down there below. Past 12 hours here at Kilauea Volcano. A little bit of seismic activity there, as you can see. Uh, nothing big yet. Where's that tilt meter? UWE, I believe, works. Yeah, there it is. That's pretty crazy. Look at that. So, about the time yesterday when the activity at the surface came to a halt, inflationary tilt rapidly rose. So, that means that uh, things are still building below there, but uh, they haven't... I don't know. I think there's maybe a little blockage going on. Uh, that's preventing that from rising and creating swelling here. This is uh, inflationary tilt at the summit level there of Kilauea Volcano. Very interesting. So we'll continue to watch that and uh, keep an eye on it. Alrighty. Uh, let's see what else we have here. I think that's about it as far as earthquake activity goes. Let's check out space weather. We did have an X flare. Pretty strong flare. X 1.1 earlier this morning around 3341 that's the sunspot there is the beautiful image there of that x flare and supposedly it did produce a cme but it is a ways away from the earth directed view <coughs> excuse me so i don't think it's going to be uh geo effective it should be uh, a ways away from uh, the planet as far as any uh storming goes goodness all right <laughs> on with the show 3341 so that's going to be the area of interest make sure my mic's still on yes it is my voice barely i'm gonna grab this water right here it's one thing i haven't been doing is drinking enough water all righty there we go much better that's all it took so this is the area that did produce the x flare this is the most recent imagery here it looks like i believe uh yep uh still looks fairly complex with a couple deep areas here to the south uh, within this structure that does harbor some potential for some further flaring uh, now the rest of these sunspots aside from this one over here which is going to be disappearing pretty soon um there's not a whole lot of hope uh, for too many of these, they all look relatively stable. So this area, pretty big sunspot, and maybe potentially this one here looks like a little bit of close proximity within that sunspot here. There's a, that's actually a new developing sunspot there, not named yet, but uh, obviously it looks like it's grown a little bit from this image to that image. 3341 is the main threat right now, and the one that did produce that X flare earlier this morning. So right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 60. X flare has been elevated to a 20% possibility there with proton event around 20% as well. Um, so yeah, things are um, developing fairly rapidly there with the sun spots currently taking place there. We'll watch 3341 as it transitions across uh, the southern hemisphere of, here of the sun, but still uh, within view, obviously, for the next few days. Looking pretty nice. Uh, no major solar storms headed this way currently. Um, and I, again, I don't think that CME that was produced from that X flare earlier is going to hit Earth. But uh, we'll wait for the um, for the professional folks there to issue out a uh, statement on if they think this should be uh, updated or not. All right, uh, weather activity. 
A little bit of movement, uh, at least thunderstorm activity up into the northern plains area. Um, it looks like maybe we have a severe threat coming up here day four and day five into the uh, uh, Nebraska, Kansas area, shifting over towards uh, uh, Iowa area. Goodness, so that's a, a potential threat coming up day four, day five. Um, that's going to be for Friday, uh, this Friday coming up, and then uh, Saturday potentially this weekend. So we'll we'll cover that as we get a little bit closer into the uh, into the end of this week. Still dealing with some uh, relatively cool conditions out here along the west coast. Uh, I think we hit about 79 today. That's uh, about 20 to yeah, yeah, about 15 degrees below normal. Thanks to a uh, pretty deep trough of low pressure out here, bringing with it some cooler air. Uh, we're going to put this into motion, see what we have in store here. It looks like that cooler air will continue here throughout the week, also into the weekend. Uh, kind of splits off a little bit here, but stays relatively close to the west coast, bringing uh, some cooler weather here, even, even into the beginning of next week before. Um, a monster, well, I can't really say a monster high pressure, but it does look like it's going to be a little bit warmer out here on a large scale uh, for the West Coast beginning the first week of July. So that's uh, somewhat of a, uh, you know, it's going to happen, right? We're expected to pick up some warm temperatures here. So, um, goodness, parts of the Texas area, Oklahoma, all the way up into uh, Canada are cooking. These are current temperatures right now, mid 80s, upper 80s with some extremely high heat index out here. We got humidity probably in the 80% range. Dew points in the, um, oh, I'm, I'm guessing the upper 70s at least. Creating that, uh, you know, that feels like temperature, which is gonna feel much hotter underneath these uh, very humid conditions and that's stretching all the way up into Kansas it looks like out here uh, into the Sacramento Valley we're dealing with pretty nice temperatures 68 outside of Chico here but I got 59 here at my house I'm not for sure where they're getting that 68 at um, but I got 59 on my weather station I'm looking at it right now um, so yeah that's uh, it's unfortunately it's gonna be a little warm out there in the Texas area I do want to see what we have for maybe rain accumulation out here over the next 10 days or so. Just give a general indication of where maybe some of the weather is going to be, some of the wet weather. I know Nebraska has been wanting uh, quite a bit of rain up in South Dakota, uh, going to get some as well. So looks like there is relief coming up there for the uh, warmer environments. Got a little bit of thunderstorm activity popping up. Um, so yeah, this is the next 10 days uh, with the ECMWF model. This is just kind of a little predictive accumulated precipitation amount. Uh, I do want to check out hurricane status here. I'm going to go over to the Western Atlantic and see what we have brewing out here. This is a GFS model. A hurricane, of course, will be... Uh, I see a little one starting to form down here. See this one right here? some type of tropical storm brewing um, it doesn't look like it's gonna form too much over here though in the Pacific got two of them we got to watch not seeing anything major heading for the Gulf or the um, or the East Coast for now all right going to jump off here folks hope everyone has a beautiful night what have we got coming in over here 5.1 Iran just coming in off the plate boundary here it looks like all right folks just stay safe out there have a good night and uh, we'll catch you guys back out here uh, tomorrow morning sometime take care everyone